Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel. This is day 54 of the 100 Day Project. And it's going to be an exciting one, I think, because I don't know what I'm doing. So this will be a journey of discovery that um, hopefully <laughs> will have some successful results. Now, um, when I first started this odyssey <laughs> 54 days ago, I said that one of the things I sought to do was to use things that I have had for a long time and haven't used or things that are relatively newer but I haven't used or don't have the expertise with or whatever. So one of the things that I gathered up were a bunch of paints intended for fabric. Now, some of these are as old as the hills. I don't even know if this stuff exists anymore. The brand name is Scribbles. It's dimensional. It says 3D paint, glimmering uh, gold and iridescent gold. This is something called shiny opalescent fabric paint in silver. <clears throat> this is glitter in a copper color. Fabra. Fabricadabra. <laughs> what a clever name. Um, this, you can see, is still sealed, and this is newer stuff. This is called Soft Fabric Ink, and it's by Fabric Creations. And if I'm not mistaken, I got this. Hmm, it would either be Walmart or Michaels. This is in metallic rose gold, and this one is metallic antique gold. Now, even older than all of that are these sorts of half-started bottles of, uh, okay, fabric medium, textile medium, swell stuff, fabric dye additive. So I gather just from a quick perusal of the instructions that this is something that you add to acrylic paint to make it more... Um, uh, successful, successful <laughs> on uh, fabric. Although we know that if we uh, get, uh, if we slop some, some fabric paint on our clothes, that it's there permanently. So I don't know. Anyway, the one that intrigued me the most um, are these two fabric dye ones. So it says that it can be brushed sponged, stenciled, and stamped onto fabrics. Suitable for most fabric items, water-based, non-toxic. So, uh, pre-wash, shake well, insert shirt board or cardboard between layers of fabric, apply paint to fabric, air dry for 24 hours, and then heat set with a dry iron using a pressing cloth. Hand wash cold after 72 hours. Clean up while wet with soap and water. So, um, obviously, whatever we try today won't be, um, the results won't be known until, you know, obviously 24 hours later. Um, so, it's said, brushed, sponged, stenciled, and stamped. So, I just gathered up some stuff. I picked these sort of foamy type uh, stamps simply because they're very simple. There are no, you know, intricate little, you know, shapes or whatever for the paint to, to gather in and uh, potentially wreck the stamp. I just grabbed a, uh, a letter stencil like so. I couldn't find my smallest um, stencil brush. Um, if you remember when stenciling was a hot, hot topic, a hot, oops, a hot item, uh, those stencil brushes had stiff uh, bristles. Quite often the brushes were round and they could be anywhere from half an inch in diameter to, you know, an inch or so. This um, is not a stenciling brush, but I think it could serve the purpose if necessary. So I also have my this sort of favorite bristle brush. I have some makeup wedges here. 
a little tiny paint palette. I have this. I don't, I prefer not to use it if I can help it. Uh, I have some water nearby. I have a dirty old rag. And what I did was just basically look through some fabric. Now this is just regular muslin that has been avocado dyed and it's kind of a peachy pink color. And I thought that it might work better to have to use an embroidery hoop. So this is a metal spring loaded one, which um, to be honest, I don't know if it it's preferable or not to the old fashioned wooden ones. Now these have a lot more adjust them with this adjustment with this screw here. So in case there are some people watching who have never seen an embroidery hoop in action, basically it, it comes, well, they all come in two parts, including this spring loaded one. So you use the, the smaller inside ring Set your fabric over, and again, I just took this out of out of the drawer, didn't bother ironing it. It is well worn. You then, and you have to ignore those fingernails of mine. I'm a day or so away from a, a mani pedi. So anyway, you um, you slip the top ring over the second one, and. just to make sure you're getting ultimate uh, tautness. You know, you want to pull, hopefully, you know, uh, with the same amount of pressure all around so that you're not distorting the fabric. And then tighten if necessary. Now, I don't think I can tighten that anymore, but it's it's pretty. It's got some spring to it. So all I intend to do is try a few of these products out and then see see what happens. So I suppose I should find uh, a knife to get this open. Now, children, never point the knife towards yourself. So, um, obviously, this will need a good shaking. I'm going to pick this color first. I think it might look cool on the this pinkish fabric. And this is basically just playing around. I mean, I'm going to consider it like a sampler almost. Um, and I will try the different techniques that they talk about brushed, sponged, stenciled, and stamped. And I this says, and I, I definitely, well, I'm almost positive I bought this at Walmart. Um, although, I don't know about where you live, but I find that the craft departments in any of the Walmarts that I've been in has really been shrinking like some almost to the point where it's <laughs> it's almost disappeared there's virtually no beading stuff left uh they've got yarn they've got some sewing notions and they've added crickets so like i i can't i don't understand it but hey nobody asked me okay so, oh this is 3d easy to use permanent precision tip Easy use, comma, permanent, comma, precision tip. Not a permanent precision tip. So let's, well, I don't need to open that. So I'm going to, okay, what am I going to do? I'm protecting my desk with my trusty little tablecloth thing. You know what? A palette might have been bad, uh, just a sheet of... Palette paper. 
Oh, not in sight. So maybe because I'm thinking it might be hard to. Well, let's put some in here and see what happens. Oh, love that color, baby. So let us try. going to try dabbing this on here. Whoa. So that seems to be a nice even coat. I'm just going to be really random about this. Hmm. Well, clearly that didn't work. Maybe the embroidery hoop was a was a mistake because I can't put that much pressure on it. So let's try this again. There was enough paint on there that it should have made contact, but again, I didn't want to push on it like on a trampoline or something. Yeah, this way on a flat surface, a person can apply some pressure. Well, that's pretty darn cute. Let's try the big one. So even though I said that, you know, this is kind of a sampler, obviously, if this turns out well, it can be torn up and used, you know, on snippets or clusters or. I don't know how much of this. So if uh, you have any experience, either recent or from years ago, on using some of these fabric paints, I'd be interested in hearing what your um, experience was, what your results were like, any do's and don'ts. And I kind of want to make contact if possible. I have several of these sorts of sponges. I should move this up just to make sure you can see. So why? Maybe there was a color on there that got lifted? Huh. Well, that might have been a happy accident, but let's... Oh... No, but this was a clean sponge, or was it? See, this one has been used before, but... Huh. The color somehow got transferred. It's even on the... on the edge of the palette. Well, let's try this again and see what happens. I told you it would be an experiment of the first order. Yeah, this paint hasn't uh, disappeared as much this time as time before. So let's see. Maybe I should be sure to take a clean sponge with the next one. Well, it's getting lighter. Oh, see, <laughs> look at that thread. Hey, 
That could be a design, a happy accident. Let's drag some of these threads over and see what. No, they want to, they don't want to cooperate. Okay, let's try a clean sponge and see what happens. It, this, um, need more paint. This, um, sponge did not look dirty to the eye, but who knows? Who knows? Sometimes this crafting stuff is a little bit like having a conversation with a very chatty friend. You never get to finish a thought, <laughs> never get to finish a sentence, never get to finish a project. So you start something and then do enough for a video or whatever, or do enough as your time allows, never to pick it up again. Or if you pick it up again, it's months later. Okay, let's see what happens. Oops, that's kind of a bit blobby there. This is turning... What can I say? What can I say? It's going to look like I have way more colors than I actually do. Okay, that's a little bit interesting. Let's do the little guy again. Hold, hold, hold. Yeah, the, I think the, using the string there kind of adds a more interesting element to this. Okay, I'm going to try this one again. Maybe I haven't been putting enough on. But still, it's pulling that color from from somewhere. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that, um, I guess a person should avoid a big clump of threads. Might be better to have them. A little more, a little more random. More stringy rather than clumpy. Those are technical terms in case you were wondering. Okay, I'm going to do the big one again. And then I should probably do the little one again. This other one, I think that's probably supposed to be wedding rings or something, but 
Maybe I'll choose a different color for that one if I decide to use it at all. I can't remember what this stuff cost, although I remember it was definitely more than just plain old acrylic paint. And again, I don't know that, that this investing in this is necessary because none of this is for, um, you know, garments for wearing. It's not going to ever be washed. Um, so, and in fact, I, I mean, I guess I'll follow the instructions and do what they say. Air dry for 24 hours and then, and then heat set with a dry iron using a pressing cloth. Um, just to make sure that the process is complete. But, um, but really, as I said before, just good old acrylic paint, you know, even the cheapest stuff that we can buy, like at dollar stores, is once it once it dries it it, it is there like forever so and like i said anybody who's gotten it on their clothes can vouch for that okay i'm getting it carried away playing here so let's do the little guy and then we'll try something else And again, well, at least to my eye, uh, this pattern will be more interesting because there's some overlap, some uh, some contact being made, you know, between the different elements. I'll do one more. Kind of over here to close this gap a bit. Okay, I have, um, hmm. I have a little, like, a, uh, what do you call it, like cottage cheese container here beside me with water. I'm just, I just threw that in there because we know that if acrylic paint, and this is probably similar, clean up with, co uh, clean while wet with soap and water. Well, I don't have soap in there, but I just don't want it drying on there and wrecking the stamp. Okay. Let us turn this around. And see... What we can do with a stencil, since my sponges are just going to do a simple ABC. Can you see? With sort of a pouncing action here. You can see I was a bit thicker there than other spaces, other places. Maybe. I wonder, since I poured that paint out, I feel like I should use it up because that's just how I feel. Hmm. I want to dip the... I 
wanted to get a different sort of thing happening here. So it looks like it might have to be these numbers. And hopefully me laying that on there is not going to create a problemo. want to be sure that you guys can see something. So I'm I'm thinking again, I, I guess I'm I'm meeting my own objective here in that I cracked open the seal on it. And I think this looks really sharp on this avocado dyed cloth. But honestly, I don't know if it's worth the extra money for to use this stuff based on, you know, my intention or your intention. If it's for like crafting in a junk journal as opposed to something you're, you know, wearing to a concert or a a fair or something that will get washed repeatedly. Whoops, I'm caught. What I should probably be doing, just getting a wet one here, to wipe that stencil because I can see making bit of a mess, of course, as well as my fingers. Okay, so any wet paint has been removed. These are all 3D. Okay, this says opalescent. Okay, what does it say? Shake well, pre wash fabric insert, plastic or wax paper inside the shirt, remove outer fluted cap, cut tip off, allowing a pin size opening. Squeeze directly on fabric or paint with a brush. Uh, clean brush with water, air dry four to six hours. Lay flat to dry. Uh, maybe I should try this one, this glittery one. Okay, 24 hour drying time, air dry only, stretchable if thin, stretchable, if thin flat lines. Permanent machine washable, Boy, that's not much in the way of directions. But it's three plus, so I should be able to figure it out. Maybe we'll find that this is all dried up. I guess that controls the flow because it didn't say use a brush, did it? Well, let's get this off and see what happens. I'll do I'll use this corner in case it's it's a In case nothing happens. Ay, ay, ay. Maybe that little thing is supposed to come out because you would think, oh, yeah, that's sealed. It would have been, we'd have been here a long time, baby, waiting for something to come out of there. Yeah. 
bought. This is probably a good thing to hang on to, to uh, put back in after use. Okay. Why don't I use this little... This little thing here is my guide. Oh, it really is a fine little... Can you see? Whoa, it comes out almost like... Uh, you know that string, <laughs> that st string glue, or those, uh, no, not glue, what is it, silly string or whatever, it's sort of on an, out of an aerosol can. That is kind of a blob. I don't know, can you see that it's thicker at this end? Let me just pretend that I have a plan here. That was a poorly contained gasp. Yeah, such poor instructions on here. Like, I don't know if I'm supposed to leave it a little bit raised or more skinny, a thin application like that. Let's just try another one here. Oh, well, I moved the stencil, but it didn't really seem to smear that much, so that's probably a good thing. Okay, for the time being, I'm going to put this thing back in. Wipe this up. See, it doesn't want to go in because... There's a bit of an airlock or something there. I'm only doing being so uh, doing such cleanup because you guys are watching. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I I can't let this paint dry here. So. Oh, that's already wet, so maybe I better do some of these rings. And then I'll try some of that 3D puffy stuff. I just don't want this paint. Oh, I suppose I could try putting it back in the bottle. Okay, that one I didn't try. That's the one I'm using. That one we tried. I'm not doing anything with the mediums. Okay, that's not too bad, but I should probably bring bring my strings back in. So, of course, with the, the puffy paint, 3D paint, um, I think it'll be a bit like uh, Nouveau Drops or something in that, you know, dare not stick your elbow or your finger or your sleeve or anything into it while 
it's still trying to dry. And it'll be interesting to see if this keeps its shape because that sure looks kind of goofy, to be honest. It looks like a, you know, a blob of something. And maybe it was a mistake to try to be using a stencil instead of just... So, you know, this one is turning that gray-blue. What the heck? Can't really tell that the strings did anything there. Maybe I should fish those other guys out of the water. Mind you, with them being wet, they'll dilute the paint a lot. So that maybe isn't the look I want either. They appear to be clean. I don't know, can you see that? I'll just let them air dry for a moment. And mind you, where's my rag? Well, that's not bad. It's kind of a broken circle there, so. Um, again, you know, I think if I was doing this a second time, I would find my acrylic, uh, my um, reusable, not reusable, um, Acrylic, um, what is the word I'm trying to think of? Um, disposable, the opposite of reusable. Um, paper palette, because then that would, um, I could have made, you know, I'd have a, uh, the paint would have sort of flowed out a bit and, um, I wouldn't be wasting paint in the sponge. I'd be getting it straight onto the stencil by dipping, you know, like so. Okay, that's not too bad. The other thing is, it also said it could be sponged. So, that could just be another, if I'm feeling bad about the paint that's being left in the sponge. Well, I'm definitely more pleased with this side than that side. Okay, is this guy dry enough to try? I prefer these spirally things more than just the double circles, but oh, I'm almost at the end of the paint, so this will be the last one. know how much of an image that will create but let's do it maybe right here yeah that's pretty faint but that's okay okay I'm going to throw these in the water again so they don't harden Throw this and this in the water. Pick these strings up. Lay this, who knows where, 
uh, just off to the side here and pull this thing in. Now for this one, all of these have, you know, dispenser type bottles. So I should, can I shake? Can I shake vigorously with two hands? I feel so foreign with my left hand. Okay, let's try this one first. So this says, shake well, pre-wash, blah, 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 insert waxer. That, I wonder, maybe has never been.